contorting a conjuring. Here's your look at the Noble Collection Toys, Bendy Figs, The Nun, Valak. This authentic, intricate, bendable figure of the demon Valak the Nun from the Conjuring universe includes a stand for display, comes with crucifix accessory, and is approximately 7.5 inches in height. Really gotta stop reviewing demonic toys. What a horrible habit to get into. <laughs> Before we get a closer look at the bendable figure of Valak the Nun, how about the first thing we do is actually figure out how tall the figure stands. And while I'm doing this, bad puns aside, I'd like to also thank the folks over at the Noble Collection who provided this sample of the Nun that we could have a look at in this review. The figure stands about seven and a quarter inches in height, or just a little over 18 centimeters tall. Like with other bendy figs, the Nun Valak comes included with a display stand. It seems like the display stand, providing I can actually pick it up, seems to be the same one that they also used for the Gremlins. A nice circular base that has sort of a two-tier look to it. It has two pegs along the top that can plug into the underside of Nun Valak's feet. And I do think that the figure actually needs it. We're going to talk more about that in a second. I do appreciate the fact that they did use the gold font down below to print on there the Nun. And I also appreciate the fact that they did print on these little cracks that are in the floor. There's what it looks like on the bottom of it, if you want to see what it looks like. Brandished in there, sizzled in there. We've got the embossed bendy figs, and then um, below that, we've got the Noble Collection toys made in China. As I said, though, it, you really do need to use the display stand when it comes to standing the figure, though I am balancing her right now. It's only more the dark magic that's keeping her up like this. Dark magic. But what you can actually do is you can take the figure. On the bottom of her feet, though, she does have the peg holes, like I already mentioned, and you can plug it onto the display base. If you just leave her on her own, sometimes I've noticed she sort of rocks back and forth, and as you can already see, falls over. I would certainly say when it comes to displaying her, make use of the display stand. After all, that's what it's there for. Line up the foot pegs to the foot holes, and just line up everything and plug her into place, or him in place. Again, you get the idea. And then, yeah, that's going to at least not only ensure that the nun Valak isn't going to fall over, but the fact it also said nun right there tells you exactly what movie it's from as well. I like that. Taking the figure now and just removing it from the display stand, we're going to put that to the side for right now. We're going to get a closer look, first of all, at the face, which is one of my favorite aspects about the figure, getting as closely possible as I possibly can. I really like the dark use of the black that they've given. It really allows them the glowing eyes, which almost do seem like they're glowing, to be pulsating even more. The brighter yellow of the eyes, coupled with the fact that they also use the same yellowing for the teeth, really does give a nice demonic look for the nun. I love the look of this one. Might be so far my favorite bendy fix that we looked at so far from the Noble Collection. Joking already earlier, she is wearing, or he is wearing, the, the habit, the nun outfit, of course. And the veil is something that's already molded to the figure, so you can't remove it. But one thing that is a separate piece that I appreciate is that they actually took the crucifix. Ooh, that's hot. I'm just kidding. Never really should joke around about the crucifix. But the crucifix actually is plastic, and then they've looped through it an actual rope. Uh, my guess is they probably have looped this around his head before actually putting the veil over top of it, because you can't actually remove it. It's, I mean, it's stuck right in there. Really like the face. Love the fact that they included the crucifix as a separate piece. Never joke around a crucifix about a crucifix. Of course, you've got the rope that ties off the top half to the bottom half of the uh, the habit. And of course, that's what it looks like on the back there as well. Really like the way it's been sculpted. You can probably already see, for, probably without me getting into it right away, that articulation or the bendable aspects of the nun are going to be a little bit more limited for the obvious reasons, just by the fact that the face is so self-contained inside the veil. You really can't do too much here. So that's pretty much null and void. Uh, he does have also have a wireframe in both the arms. You can kind of see by the fact it's got the little breathing holes <laughs> that allows it to breathe. But this is the only point really that you can actually bend the figure. So it's still bendable. It lives up to the name that you can actually bend the hands. And actually, while we're talking about the hands, look at those gruesome looking digits, gnarly looking fingernails on the end painted nicely in black. Love to look at those hands. As for the rest of the figure, I mean, pretty much you're just getting the main skirting here of the robe. And then down below that, surprised to actually see that the legs were separate pieces. I mean, for a part that you're really not going to be seeing on the figure anyways, I'm surprised they just didn't sculpt or at least just seal this all off and just have the feet peeking out from the bottom. But they actually did have the legs sculpted separately, which I guess technically you 
probably could see that there's may, there may be a little bit of wireframe in there as well, but you're really not going to be gaining access to it, to it at all, just because, again, it gets self-contained inside the habit. Great looking figure, though. Even if it doesn't live up as much to the idea of a bendable figure, just by the limitations of having the arms being really the only thing that can actually move back and forth. As just a showpiece alone, I think this is actually one of my favorite non Valak figures that we've actually got. We don't have really a lot of non uh, collectibles to go around, but I really think that they've captured not only the essence of the nun, demonic or otherwise, but I think the paint is so good on this one. Just again, see what it looks like from the side. I think again, like just even the side profile looks fantastic on this. For me, generally, I just like to display these bendable figures, of course, grabbing the display stand, once again, plugging into the undersides of the feet. I just, for me, like to display these on my shelf. I'm probably not going to be displaying this maybe with a Gremlins. It's just going to freak them right out. But I think I'm probably going to have this on display with some of my other horror collectibles. It fits in rather nice for a regular scaled figure. It doesn't have the articulation, of course, that other figures on the market for horror stuff would have. But I think the Valak here would fit in quite well with those other, those other horror collectibles. Not as much bendable, no, as maybe some of the other bendable figures that we looked at from Noble Collection, but certainly one of my favorite non valid collectibles that have been put out in recent memory. You may hear the Noble Collection toys, I may also hear bendy figs, and you might just assume that the bendable figures that they're producing are cutesy characters. You could say that based on the fact that we have looked at Mogwise and Gremlins with the Gremlins Series 1, and just recently we also had a look at the Wizard of Oz, but they're also tackling horror as well. And some of their best outings so far in the horror genre has been the non -valic. He, she, it does admittingly have problems standing on its own. So I definitely would encourage if you're looking to pick up this figure for yourself, make use, yes, of the display stand that comes included with it. Not only will it allow it not to fall over, but it's also going to tell you exactly what film it's from. Even though it's also from The Conjuring, they have presented here it as the Nun, the standalone movie, which I didn't really think was as good as a standalone movie. I'm not a big fan of The Nun in, as a movie itself, but I certainly did appreciate the appearance of Valak appearing in what? The Conjuring 2, which happens to also be my favorite of The Conjuring movies. Uh, this one definitely, if you're a big fan of The Nun and like the look of Valak, he, she, or it will look great on a shelf. Just don't go anywhere near that crucifix. Uh, you may not even have any problems. For some reason, it was just sizzling on my hands when I was touching it. Probably should get that looked at. Big thank you, though, to the folks over at the Noble Collection Toys that did, in fact, provide the sample of the Nun Valak that we have a look at in this video. For your video question for today of The Conjuring Universe, what's your favorite film in it? For me, it's The Conjuring 2. But let me know down below in the comments section what your favorite film is so far in The Conjuring Universe. And again, a big thank you to the folks over at Noble Collection that once again did provide the sample of the Nun Valak. We are going to be looking at Reagan. We are also going to be looking at Annabelle in some upcoming videos. The crucial point in all of this is to not ensure that you're not missing, well, first of all, that you're not missing out on any of the content that you're seeing. So if you are new here and you're enjoying the content you're seeing, I'm not drawing too much attention, I hope, to you. But if you are new and you're enjoying all the stuff that you've been seeing so far, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Yes. Turn on the bell notification. Sure. Keep those reminders going. And also keep your peepers peeled to this channel because Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m., two times a day. That's unheard of. Not here, Jack. Not here. You mind if I call you Jack, by the way? Oh, you do mind. Okay, sorry. Yeah, two videos a day, Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Keep those ghoulish peepers of yours peeled. While we have wrapped up things for the Valix so far, there definitely will be more bendy figs coming your way. So as always, as always, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.